How do Muslims believe in How do Muslims believe in the gospel while it's corrupted? Five questions explaining Muslims' belief in the Bible. Five questions explaining Muslims' belief in the Bible. Most Christians don't have a right understanding about what Muslims believe regarding the Bible. Some think that we fully deny it, while others think that we believe in it. Here I'll try to answer five questions to explain what we believe regarding the Bible with an important note at the end. 1. Do Muslims believe in the Bible? Well, to answer this question shortly, Muslims do believe in the Bible, just not the same way that Christians do. It is a core aspect in our belief to believe in all the prophets of Allah, God, and all their books, as it is stated in the start of the Quran. And who believe in what has been revealed to you, O Muhammad, and what was revealed before you, and of the hereafter they are certain, in faith. Those are upon, right his guidance from their Lord, and it is those who are the successful. Quran, 2 4 5. They believe in the revelation that Allah sent down to you, O Prophet, and in that which he revealed to all the other prophets before you, peace be upon them, without distinction. And they have a definite belief in the afterlife, with its rewards and punishments. Aleph Lam Mim, letters like these begin certain surahs of the Quran. Although they have no meaning in themselves, they do however have a purpose. Since there is divine wisdom contained in everything in the Quran, these letters point to the miracle of the Quran, made up of the letters which make up the words we speak. Therefore, when surahs begin with letters in this way, they are usually followed with a verse about the Quran, as we see in this surah. This is the Quran, in which there is nothing of any doubt, either in terms of its origin, nor in terms of its meaning. It is the word of Allah, guiding those who are mindful of Allah to the way that leads to him. They believe in the revelation that Allah sent down to you, O Prophet, and in that which he revealed to all the other prophets before you, peace be upon them, without distinction. And they have a definite belief in the afterlife, with its rewards and punishments. The people who possess these qualities are on the path of guidance, and will be successful in this world and the next, gaining what they desire and being saved from what they fear. Al-Baqarah 1-5 It's stated in many other places as well, but as I said, it's not the same way Christians believe in it. 2 inches which way do Muslims believe in the previous books? Muslims believe in the original books that came down to different prophets. However, most of them are not the ones we have today because they were altered and changed later after their prophets had passed away. The Quran and the previous books have the same creed and basics, but not the same rules or laws as each prophet was sent by the rules that were suitable to his people at their time. While the Quran came to be suitable for all mankind from the time of Prophet Muhammad, the last prophet, till the, the day of resurrection. 3. Why do Muslims believe that the books before the Quran were changed? This isn't just a claim by Muslims, Christian scholars actually say the same thing, that what we have today isn't the original text. From an objective perspective, after studying the Bible, anyone will end up with this same conclusion. This is known by simply studying the Bible and its history, there's evidence of manipulation, adding and removing. Besides, there is no proof for it being the original in the first place. So, objective facts and evidence support this Muslim's belief. For more details on this matter you can read the book, Hunting for the Word of God, by Prof. Samia Mary. For what are the criteria that Muslims have to distinguish between the original revelation of God and what has been altered later? As God's message is always one, same creed and basics, and since we have the final revelation from Allah, God, to mankind which not even a single letter or sound of it was altered, we use it as a base to compare to. So, whatever the Quran confirms, even figuratively, we confirm, whatever the Quran denies, we deny, and whatever isn't mentioned in it we stay neutral to it. Because it might be true so we don't deny it, or it might be man-made so we don't accept it, and what it says is insignificant now if it isn't mentioned in the final message. 5. But why would God let the previous messages be tainted? Before answering this, you need to understand that this question is for both Muslims and Christians together because it's a question about a proven fact, that we already know had happened. The answer is because Allah, the All-Wise, the All-Knowing, is testing people by this and everyone will choose what path to follow. Also take into consideration that those previous messages were local messages for certain times and certain people, and if people went astray from them, God would send another prophet to get the people back to the right track. However, the final message that came with the last prophet is the universal one that was sent to everyone until the Day of Judgment. And that is the Quran that was revealed to the last prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and that is why it was the one that was preserved as Allah, God, promised. As God's message is always one, God's message is and will always be on earth. This concludes our questions. 
Note, however, that what I talked about was Muslims' general belief in all the previous books, including the Bible, not just the Bible. Since the Bible is just the selection of certain books among a lot of different varieties of books, by no means, that can be said to be objective or divine. And some of the books in the Bible are actually quoting and referring to other books outside the Bible and ones that have been lost. One more note is that regarding the Muslims' belief in prophets, we follow the same rule, we believe in all prophets from Adam to Muhammad. Some of them were mentioned in the Quran. And regarding those who were not mentioned in the Quran, if they come with a message different from all the other prophets' creed and basics, then we reject them because in this case they are just false prophets. To conclude this article, I thank you for reading to the end and encourage seeking knowledge to understand. Please do read more and read the Quran to see its message and what it is calling for. How do Muslims believe in the gospel while it's corrupted? Corrupted, yet believe in it. How come? The matter is so simple. We can summarize the whole story in three points. Muslims believe in the original of gospel and the original of Torah as well. At the same time, Muslims also believe that the Bible, including the Old Testament that includes the Torah and the New Testament that includes the four Gospels, is not pure and authentic. And accordingly, is not valid. Thus, Muslims were commanded to neutrally deal with the Bible and its texts as a kind of respect to it, since no one can be 100% sure which text exactly is corrupted and falsified and which is not. That's why Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, Whatever the people of the book, Jews and Christians, tell you, do not verify them, nor falsify them, but say, we believe in Allah and his messengers. If it is false, do not confirm it, and if it is right, do not falsify it. Abudu 26.4 Why corrupted? But let's take a step back and ask another question. Why is the Bible distorted and falsified? Why didn't God preserve it pure and authentic? Why did he allow it to be exposed to falsification while he was capable of keeping his revelations pure? First of all, the original Torah and the original Gospel were not meant to be sent to all people, they were only sent to a certain group of people at a certain time. They were sent to the children of Israel, exactly as prophets Moses and Jesus, peace be upon them, were sent to the children of Israel, and thus, they are called, among others, prophets of the children of Israel, which means the prophets who were sent to the children of Israel. Traits of the children of Israel Many messengers were sent to the children of Israel, and the last of them was Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. But they were always following their own desires. Every time a messenger came to them with what their souls did not desire, they were arrogant, and a party of the messengers they denied, and another party they killed. They also did the same with the divine scriptures sent to them. When Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, came to them with the Torah from God, they started to distort words from their proper usages and they used to conceal much of the scriptures. They kept on doing so until God sent to them Prophet Jesus with the Gospel to continue the message. This was the habit of the children of Israel in dealing with the messengers of God and the divine messages. Thus, a book after a book was sent to them to remind them of what they forgot or to show what they distorted and concealed. Not to mention that the Gospel, for example, was written way after Prophet Jesus, which of course deepens the possibility of the falsification and alteration. Accordingly, since the Torah and the Gospel were sent to the children of Israel and only to the people at their time, not to all mankind. And since there was always a prophet after prophet and a book after book sent to them. Let's say that there was no need or necessity to keep these books pure and authentic beyond the time for which they were needed. They were only needed for a certain group of people at a certain time, not for every time and place, with legislations that were suitable only to that time, not to other times. Quran, the final revelation to mankind. Thus, we will find that the only holy book that God promised to preserve pure and authentic without any change exactly, as it was sent down is the Holy Quran that the last and final messenger of God, Prophet Muhammad, came with from God. Why? Because the Quran is the only holy book that was sent to the whole humanity, to all mankind till the end of the world. Exactly as Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger to all mankind and a mercy to the worlds, and no other book or revelation will be sent down to the people after it. It's the last and final divine message to mankind that is. 1. Confirming that which preceded it of the scripture and as a criterion over it. 2. Guidance and good tidings for the believers. 3. Valid to every time and place. Indeed, it is we who sent down the Quran and indeed, we will be its guardian. I alone revealed this Quran to the heart of Muhammad, peace be upon him, as a reminder for people. I will guard the Quran from anything being added to it or subtracted from it, or anything in it being exchanged or altered. 
O oh messenger, I sent before you messengers to prior groups of disbelievers, and they belied them. So you are not an exceptional messenger from the perspective of being made out as a liar by your people. Previous groups of disbelievers did not receive a messenger except that they belied and ridiculed him. al 9-11 We will never find such a promise in or about any holy book except only the Holy Quran. To conclude, we can say that Muslims believe in the original Torah and the original Gospel, not the current ones. They can quote from the texts of the people of the book that do not contradict with Islam and what came in it, without affirming ratification or denial. In this short video, Dr. Zakir Naik briefly solves the puzzle. Have an enjoyable watching. Why did God save the Quran and did not keep the Gospel of Distortion? More references. Difference between Bible and Injil, Gospel, Ahmad Didat. Hoy is the writer of the Bible. Zakir Naik.